Hi, you guys. Welcome back. This is Richard Sachs for Lost Arts Radio. And uh, we have a great guest tonight that I'll introduce to you in a second here. But this is going to be, a, a, you know, in the context of the current virus crisis. And uh, it's pretty well known to everybody that doesn't depend on mainstream media to get their information that it's a bioweapon that was created for a purpose that it's fulfilling right now. Um, hard for a lot of people to grasp, but that's just a, a baseline of beginning information, and it's uh, being used as an excuse for a lot of things. Um, panic, which is really, you know, it's funny in the cartoons and comedies, they say, well, tell me when to panic, so I'll know the right time, and the point is, there isn't a good time, no matter what's happening. Um, fear and panic ha are not only useless, they're counterproductive. So instead of that, it's better to learn everything we can about what's going on and, and what might be, you know, safe, harmless, effective uh, countermeasures against it. I certainly won't say treatments because I'm not allowed to say anything medical, nor do I want to do that. I'm not even a medical doctor. Um, but we need, in my opinion, uh, widespread knowledge of harmless and, and effective alternate models. Um, most of the medical personnel that I talk to anyway uh, don't seem to ever question what they've memorized and what they think they've learned, but a lot of it, what they think they've learned, they've actually memorized and never questioned. And you hear things like the science on something is settled, and that's an oxymoron because if it's real science, it even questions itself questions what it absolutely believes is true and it keeps doing that indefinitely um, instead of this training that we get from academia a lot that is really arrogance and intimidation and trying to wipe out uh, the questioning that should be the, the central point of ongoing science but there are, there are some doctors that remember um, what real science is that it questions everything including their own training and that Hippocrates who used to be, his teachings used to be the center of the Hippocratic Oath that's really not used too much anymore, at least around here, um, that you shouldn't do any harm. I mean, it se seems really obvious, but it's clearly forgotten in, in most of modern medicine now. There are long pages and pages and pages of the harm done by so-called medicines, and uh, there are some doctors that understand that and are looking for things that not only don't hurt you, but actually make you recover from whatever you're trying to deal with. Um, it's not always appreciated, to say the least, but it really should be. And so um, our guest is one of those people who's coming to us from outside the country, and we'll let him say where that is. And I want him to introduce himself to the degree that he feels comfortable with um, in harmony with the security issues that we may have and uh, he's got some really important stuff to share so welcome and uh, nice to see you again Dr. Bill um, thanks for giving okay. us the time great pleasure to be here Richard yeah and as a um, just as a, a frame of reference uh, and to let you know that I I have a uh, a real personal experience with the coronavirus because I, I think I've, I've had the coronavirus. I think my wife has had it. I think her friends have had it. And I'm coming to you from China, where I've lived for many years. And I'm at, uh, you know, I'm not at the epicenter in Wuhan, but um, uh, it seems that this virus is so transmissible and infectious that very quickly, way before anybody realized it, it was in the wild and out and uh, people were being exposed to it. So in any event, my, my wife had what she thought was a, a cold for about two weeks and her friend, a couple of her friends who she plays badminton with also had a cold. And I, I had to look back after she got over a cold and I had uh, a couple of days where I had a little bit of a cough non-productive non cough, but that was the extent just for a couple of days. That, I think that's that's what the coronavirus was like for me. Now, okay. the, the reason that I feel that it, it's very probable that I had it is because she got a phone call about a week ago, and it turned out that one of the people that, that she'd been playing this badminton with had 
uh, symptoms of, uh, of weakness or fatigue and trouble breathing. Mm-hmm. And then come to find you know, she hadn't she didn't hear from her for about a month, but it turned out that she was calling her from the intensive care unit. And it turns out that her husband was also admitted to the intensive care unit. Well, wow. I shouldn't say that he admitted to the hospital as well. So I'm okay. pretty sure that uh, you know this is all all part of it. Now I <clears throat> I haven't been tested because I haven't. I mean, haven't had any reason to be tested, but anyway, I'm very familiar with the uh, uh, what's happened in China. Been following it very closely, and my my feeling is that about two weeks ago, when they announced that things were going to open up somewhat, and they really were going to kind of go back to work because it was, it was critical for China to get back to work because the the economy was basically imploding otherwise. So people started traveling, people, they started re, uh, relaxing the restrictions and people started getting back to work. And I was just afraid that if it might have been premature because if you had large numbers of people that hadn't been exposed to the virus, had no immunity, that it could be a whole other wave of uh, people getting the virus again. But that right. has not proved to be the case. Every day I see more and more people marching up to work most of them wearing masks, but they're back at their back at work, and there has not been any big bump or even a small bump that I can tell that people, where you have the virus kind of being introduced to this uh, new population of susceptible individuals. That hasn't happened at all. So by the experience of China that I'm seeing firsthand is that this virus is absolutely impossible to stop spreading into virtually everybody. It's that transmissible, that infectious. But for the vast majority of people, it's going to be a non-event. Now, sadly, there are going to be some people that for whatever reason, age, ability in China, you know, there's a huge amount of smoking. So Mm -hmm. their lungs are compromised to begin with. So, you know, those people, as you get older, their, their immune uh, system compromised people who've been on chemotherapy or any number of other medical problems that can cause the immunity to, to be reduced. They're more susceptible, and I think it hits them hard, and it can really, well, you know, it can be lethal in mm-hmm. a certain amount. But I think that the percentages of what you read about being 1% of the people that get coronavirus uh, being killed by it, that is, it's an enormous exaggeration because it really isn't taking into account all the people that have had it that aren't included in the quote of people that have had it and haven't been tested and there hasn't been any reason to test it. So anyway, that's the experience of China sitting here at ground zero is that this whole thing, which is sweeping the U.S. now from what I can tell in terms mm-hmm. of the, the reaction and the panic and the, panic buying and store shelves and people sequestering themselves and, you know, self-quarantining and being really almost worried to death, that uh, this whole thing is going to run through the system within two months, regardless of what anybody does. And, you know, there, it's, it's going to, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that get sick from it because, you know, if you start out with 350,000, 350 million people, even if it's one tenth of one percent that have serious problems, that's a significant number. All right. And I think the 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 strategy in retrospect, and I think the strategy moving forward was for China, and I think it is for the U.S. is that they're trying to prevent a mass uh, exposure and a mass infection occurring throughout the population, because then all the people that were susceptible would require care and that would you know that that could overload the system but if you if you have it kind of released and some people are some people gradually over a month or two's time get it and a certain percentage are affected and need you know more extensive medical care then the medical system is going to be able to handle it better and that's you know time will tell but that's absolutely been the experience in china and now uh, the trucks are running, the buses are running, uh, people are, you know, uh, 
going about their business, going to work with a mask. But uh, truthfully, I think the masks are, uh, they're a salve that's a psychological more than really being effective. Mm -hmm. That's in my personal opinion. But if, if that makes people feel good and they think that, that helps, that's fine. Well, what I had heard is the N95 masks have a typical opening of five microns and the virus is one micron. So that gives some kind of a hint <laughs> that you're correct. <laughs> Case in point. So yeah. anyway, that's that's the reality on the ground here. Uh, but I, the, the reason that I've been particularly interested in the uh, kind of following things, in addition to being you know, potentially personally involved, and at first, I think my reaction was, you know, being quite concern, you know, and what this is going to do, because it really wasn't when it first started. The, the full lethality or the amount of symptoms or, you know, how deadly it was, wasn't really known at that time. You know, you'd see pictures of people dropping, dropping on the streets like flies. And if that was really the, the, the variants of the virus, then there's a lot, lot of reason to worry, but I, that hasn't been the case. Uh, and there's my experience is that it's uh, literally in my case, it was, it was a non-event. It was hardly noticeable, and I think that's going to be the case for most people. But as they say, we'll find out. But, I think uh, go, going back to kind of why, why were, you know, kind of how I've come to your attention is that. In the course of uh, a project that I've been doing that has to do with uh, the enhancement of the natural process and the body's defenses. And that it started out uh, over a decade ago um, and has to do with a, uh, uh, my, my late wife developed breast cancer. And we were looking for a non-toxic treatment for her. She had many friends who had surgery, chemo, radiation, mm -hmm. and it was a very toxic path that they chose and very, not only disfiguring, but uh, excruciatingly painful and the quality of life was reduced to uh, the really almost welcome death at the end. So, mm -hmm. you know, she didn't want to go down that path. So I, I started looking, being, being a physician and and, and thinking about what we might be able to to do that would be helpful without, you know, aside from that, the, the typical legacy treatments, which are obviously quite severe, expensive, and debilitating. So one of the things that I uh, recalled from my, my past training and past practice was an associate uh, who was an ENT doctor, and he he needed a place to put a, a so-called yellow dye laser for a project that he was doing with a private company who had a new technology which they called photodynamic therapy, or PDT. And this was about a $200,000 laser, and this was, this was nearly 20 years ago. And I had space in my office, and uh, he was adjacent. So uh, in the course of having the laser that he could have access to easily, uh, he explained this new therapy. And in his description, the way he described it, is that uh, the patient was administered this medicine. And in this case, it was called, uh, the name is called etiopurpin, etio purpurin, or uh, uh, perlatin, and it was made by Miravant uh, Company, pharmaceutical company, or um, what their exact name was. Are you describing when, are, were you in the U.S. at this time or in China? Uh, I, I was in the U.S. at that time, okay. and uh, he was, you know, he was doing a study, you know, an approved study, where people were given this medicine, and then they used the laser. So mm -hmm. the, the technology involves a two-step process. The medicine is given. And then interestingly and sort of amazingly and almost miraculously, the medicine 
say knows, but the, the medicine concentrates in the cancer that, you know, that was the problem area where he needed to, that he wanted to treat. So it concentrates there uh, and is basically uh, really not present to much of an extent elsewhere, which seems sort of miraculous to me. I mean, it, it almost beggared belief that, you know, you have a medicine that somehow finds the cancer like that and sticks to it. And then the unique property of this, this type of uh, medicine is that it's light sensitive. So when you apply, and, and there, are, there are certain wavelengths that the, this medicine is particularly sensitive to, it's called the peak of activation. So when you, when you apply the wavelength of light that this medicine is particularly sensitive to, there's a reaction takes place and electrons are generated that in turn causes a reaction with oxygen and creates a highly oxidative form of oxygen called singlet oxygen, which because this medicine is concentrated in the cancer, it basically oxidizes the cells in there and it either damages them, destroys them, or damages them, them enough to where they go to something called, uh, well, it's, a, it's like a program death. You know, they, they go ahead and live, out, live it out and they don't multiply and they just, it's like a program death. It sounds almost so, like a, a safer form of what's called IPT. I don't know if you've heard of it. Insulated, insulin potentiated therapy. And what they do is they give some sugar, as I understand it, to the patient and it goes to the cancer cells because they like sugar and they eat it faster than normal cells. And at least that's what they see on, on the uh, pictures they're getting. And then they give poison, chemotherapy, and it goes primarily to the cancer cells and they're able to give less, but it's still extremely toxic and not a health food. So what you're talking about is what that would like to be, I think. Without the toxicity. Yeah. Now, I, the, 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 I, I wasn't in the ENT field, so it was interesting. And, but it, it really, really didn't, wasn't relevant to my practice. And you know, I was busy doing some other interesting things, you know, yeah. in the field that I was in. But I did remember it when my wife had this problem, so I started investigating this photodynamic therapy. And what, what I discovered was that, indeed, this, this technology had progressed. There were some approved agents available, you know, one in particular in the U.S. that was it's about 30 years old now, but that, that's available. But there were a lot of newer agents with, which were uh, had much more advantages and fewer disadvantages compared to this very, very, what I consider very outmoded and obsolete medicine, which is really the only one approved for use in the U.S. And the problem with that older medicine is that even though it sticks to cancer cells and is, is approved for certain types of cancer in the U.S., it made people light sensitive to the extent that they needed to sequester themselves in the darkness or, you know, couldn't be really exposed to sunlight for something like two to three weeks. Mm, wow. So, obviously, that's a huge disadvantage, if you, even if it helps, but if you have to be in, you know, be in a dark room for three weeks, that's, that's a pretty big burden. And the newer medicines, which were available elsewhere, did not have this light sensitivity, and they were, they were uh, more selective. Less, less toxic in terms of testing, and they produce more single oxygen. You know, a lot of the, the factors that go into what makes one of these medicines really good. And there's another thing that's quite significant, and that is that the wavelength that, that these medicines are activating, it turns out that the, if, you can, if you can find one that has these favorable qualities, attributes, but is activated at a at the higher wavelength, say in the 750. The, the, the one that's approved is activated about 630 nanometers, and and that's in the uh, kind of the lower red range. Mm -hmm. Now, if you if you can find one, and, and there are, they are available that have all the benefits, but if they're activated in the 
750 to 800 range, then you get, rather than a fairly shallow depth of penetration, you know, obviously if you shine a red light, it doesn't go all the way through you. But if you find beyond about 700 nanometers, things become invisible, it's, it's the infrared. And, but infrared penetrates much more deeply into the body. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what the significance of that is, is that if you, even if you have a, well, say you use this kind of obsolete one, it's called photofrem, that, you know, it, it goes throughout the body and it sticks to cancers, but if the cancers are deep in the body, you really can't activate it with the red light that's going to cause the, this, the second part of this two-step process and cause the damage to the cancer. Mm -hmm. The light doesn't penetrate there. You can use a longer wavelength penetrating light, which obviously you have to match that up with a, uh, a sensitizer that will react, you know, on the cancer and get the effect that you want. So, it, you know, that's uh, that was kind of a stumbling block. But anyway, it turns out that the the greatest variety of these photodynamic agents. Uh, was in Russia, and they have a number, you know, most of the types that they have approved in the U.S., but they had some additional ones. So, in the course of things, I, I was working with the clinic as a kind of an advisor and researcher, R&D, and I was able to introduce some of these uh, more advanced, deeper penetrating, more effective, less photosensitizing medicines, uh, to this clinic, and also some, the Russians also have some very interesting ways to apply light, uh, rather than using very expensive lasers, it turns out that you can use LED lights and they work quite well. Mm. So, and the other thing that they had, <clears throat> and the very interesting part, and the beauty of this technology, even though it sounds sort of magical and a little preposterous to some people that, you know, you've got a medicine that doesn't help. You're saying it sticks to cancer cells. Well, that, that sounds good, but I mean, how do you know? But the beauty of this technology is, is that in the course of being activated, this molecule, in the course of being activated by the energy to create the effect that you want in cancer cells and other things that I'll, I'll mention later, that in, a, in addition to that, in the course of that, it fluoresces, so it actually glows. When you add light to a, tumor, to a cancer tumor, and you shine a light on it, it starts glowing. So, in a way, that's kind of proof positive that the medicine is concentrated and it's where you want it, and it actually, that is what's happening. Okay. So even in the total darkness of the interior of the body, it starts. It becomes a light source when it's activated. Uh, it, uh, well, if it's activated, it'll produce fluorescent light. But that that may you may not be able that may not be able to get out of the body unless it's a little bit more superficial, because you have a limitation there on the wavelength of light coming out. Right. But if it's closer to the surface, like in the breast or other areas, right? you can actually, and I'll have this on the, the website, uh, you actually can go around and you can see where the cancer is because it's it, it's glowing there and here in real time. Uh, you can see where the cancer is and this is a harmless process. It's an amazing diagnostic tool uh, not being used. So, Anyway, I'll, uh, the, the website that I'm, I just started putting up a few days ago, but yeah. it's called, uh, our, our company is called Photosonics, P-H-O-T-O-S-O-N-X.com. And if you, if you go to that site, on the home page, I just put it up yesterday, but you'll okay. see right on the front page examples of how this medicine glows and concentrates in the tumor. You see pictures of it, so it's not, it's a well-established uh, uh, fact that this is, this is what happened. Are there any videos on uh, YouTube or anything like that? I'm, I'll put some, I'll embed some videos of this process 
that I took so people can see that. But okay. I, okay. I, I, I don't think, I think YouTube generally uh, bans or prohibits most anything having to do with medicine or medical stuff. And if, and if people try to do YouTube videos, they'll either ban them or yeah. actually de talk about it and demonetize them. Yeah, if it's toxic, they don't have any problem. But if it's natural, you're right. That's probably up. So, so uh -huh. the the other interesting thing is, and, and this is, uh, I think, is probably important for your your listeners to sort of take on board, is that what I'm talking about here in this so-called medicine, which is uh, uh, you know a photosensitizer, it's sensitive mm -hmm. to light. Mm -hmm. This is just an enhancement of a natural process. Our body, and this is you know virtually unappreciated by the vast majority of the people, is that our bodies, just like just like uh, plants, produce chlorophyll, which is light sensitive, and they use that to harvest the CO2, break off the CO2 to make make their structure mm -hmm. and it gives off oxygen. Our, we have developed a, sort of an analogous biochemical process. It's one of the pathways where we use the, you know, the building blocks and we make light sensitive molecules as well. So just that concept is probably seems foreign to most people. Yeah. Our, our own body produces light sensitive materials and it's a natural process now the question is why why does the body do that why, why would the body create light sensitive molecules and that is because again it's incredibly unappreciated and i didn't appreciate it you know in all my training as a physician that concept was never mentioned never no mention, no knowledge, no exposure to it whatsoever. And, as I, and I'm pretty sure most people have no concept of that. Right. But so the reason I'm and I've kind of I'm right. I've got a book that I've mentioned to you. It's called the Unified Theory of Health and Healing. And by what's what's the Unified Theory is that the body develops has developed built baked into our DNA, a process where we produce light-sensitive molecules. And the, build, the basic building block is something called uh, amino ledulinic acid, ALA. And if you put a number of those together, it forms a ring. And the next the, the thing that forms is called PP9, protoporphyrin 9. And that's very light-sensitive. So what, what that what these light sensitive molecules do is they circulate around and the body is, this is a, probably as important or more important than our so-called immune system is this um, process of using light sensitive molecules to stick to all the bad, bad things that the body generally comes into contact with. So what are, what are the things that really uh, affect a person's health. Their bacteria, <laughs> viruses, many different types of viruses, fungi, fungi infections, abnormal cells, mutated cells that turn into cancer or growth, either malignant or benign, abnormal, abnormal new vessels. So it turns out that these naturally produced light sensitive molecules stick to all of those all of those things I just mentioned. Now again, this sounds when I first sort of started appreciating this, you're thinking, wow, what what's going on here? Why why is why does the medicine, the the PDT agents, the sensitizers, they stick to all of these different uh, invaders and abnormal situations in the body. They stick to all of those. And you can see it because they fluoresce. And you can see the result of that because um, if, you go to, if you go to the website and you 
you know, it'll all be there. It's not quite built yet, but I, there's, then you see that this, this, uh, this technology is one of the most effective broad spectrum antiviral that exists right now. So, so they've, they've, it's, it's effective against HIV. It's a bit effective against the human papillomavirus, which is causal in uh, cervical cancer and uh, terrible uh, uh, throat cancers and whatnot. Uh, it's effective with herpes simplex, with general herpes and you know all, all those problems, and most other types of viruses. So, the, the, so it, this, I don't think it's an accident that this happens. I think this is, you know, these are enhanced molecules that are kind of more powerful than maybe what the body is producing. But in and of itself, the body produces these light sensitive molecules. And I'll, I'll give you three examples of how uh, this is demonstrated uh, through the use of fluorescence. And there's a, there's a uh, phenomena called autofluorescence. And if you shine the right wavelength that activates these porphyrin molecules that the body's produced, if you shine that on essentially virtually any cancer, it will glow, it will fluoresce. So they call that autofluorescence. And there's even an FDA approved camera where you can go and use, you can use this autofluorescence as a form of diagnosis. Inside the body, right. right. Inside the body, like if you, okay. you know, say, if you want to say if you had lung cancer, yeah, you use this special technology called autofluorescence to see where the cancer is in the bronchi. Okay, so let me see if I understand one point correctly, and that is that the body is producing some kind of a substance by itself with no therapy that will go stick on pathogens or cancer. Uh, conglomerates, basically, that could turn into tumors yep. and things. And when light hits it, that enables it to dissolve what it sticks onto. Yep. Yep. But if it's deep inside the body, where does nature assume that the light's coming from? Jack. Well, I'm not sure it assumes that, but it, uh, um, in and of itself, if people are getting a lot more light you know, in their natural state, you know, People were, you know, obviously were in more equatorial region. You really go back in the history of our, well, our right, origin. Right. And, and lots of light. I mean, I so agree that, that we're designed to, to have a lot of light on our skin all the time. But yeah. what I'm asking is, how does that transmit to the deep internal uh, sensitive material that's waiting to be activated? Well, one, uh, I, I can't answer that entirely. But I can tell you that there, there, when the, normally this process of activation and the singular oxygen creation that happens in you know the milliseconds. It's a very these molecules get activated, they create the singular oxygen and drop back down to another shell and give off the light. It just you know it's a very small area that it occurs in, and it happens very quickly. Now that's 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 one way that the molecules are activated. There's another way when these molecules go to this higher energy state, but they don't immediately drop back down into their kind of more stable, comfortable area. It takes much longer for them to drop back down. So in a way, that may be one of the ways in which the body uses the circulation of these molecules. Because it's not as if every molecule of, of sensitizer totally sticks to the cancer cells. There's always a dynamic. Some are going in the cell and some are going out. It's just that there's more of a trap door in the, in the cancer cell because it's, we might as well go into it now. The reason that, that my, the generally accepted or it's observed that the reason these medicines stick, either go in cancer cells, stick to viruses, bacteria, etc., is because they're negatively charged, they're more acid. So it's almost like a little magnet, negatively magnet, that uh, these molecules stick to. Okay. And, and that's the evidence for that is, 
Uh, there was a fellow named Otto Warburg. And uh, in the 1930s, he got the Nobel Prize when he discovered that there, there's a basic difference between so-called normal cells and cancer cells. And it has to do with the fact that cancer cells, their metabolism is may spore on a, a lactic acid-based metabolism. It's much more acid than a normal cell. They got the Nobel Prize for that. If you look at viruses, viruses, as most people know, they're either RNA or DNA viruses. But the RNA means ribonucleic acid. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. The bacteria that this sticks to, if you go to Wikipedia and you look at it, you'll see it's got a, a coating of mycolic acid. So that's that's kind of how the body, the, the bad guys, the bad you know invaders, the pathogens, and the abnormal cells, they share a common uh, property of being negatively charged. The, the, like the mitochondria and try to cancer cell can be like 300 times as negatively charged as, as other, other types of mitochondria elsewhere. So there's mm -hmm. a very powerful uh, attraction to, for these molecules. So let's see, where was it? Um, anyway, the, 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 uh, the activation can all, it can be, there, there are three types of when you activate it. There can be this very quick reaction. It can be delayed when. So if the molecules are circulating around, even if it's a small portion of them that uh, don't immediately drop back down, if they circulate around and they get stuck to a cancer cell, it's not as effective, but it is effective because at some point they'll drop back down They'll create the single oxygen, they'll fluoresce, and they'll be damaging to even deeper structures. Now, obviously, it would be to everyone's advantage if you had a way, a deeply penetrating energy, so you didn't have to rely on this, you know, maybe a tiny phenomena of the longer, longer term, uh, or the battery effect of, mm. of putting the charge into these uh, Molecules. If you had something where you didn't have to wait on that, you could just send the energy right down and activate the molecules. Right. And up until up until very recently, that hasn't been available. You know, the the, the agent that was activated at a higher wavelength, impossible to get. Or if you did get it, you know, and you tried to use it, you'd be put in jail as a physician or prosecuted. Right. Or used or, right. You know. Crucified, whatever. Yeah, so whatever that it hasn't been available. But the 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 breakthrough, and this is this is a very prof absolutely profound uh, effect. That's uh, and maybe the first time people have heard it. But this is going to cha change the world, in my opinion, because what has been developed by uh, a team here in and it's an Australian company that they've been working with uh, uh, this very fantastic cancer specialist here at Open Mind. And they've worked on a, uh, uh, a, an ultrasound, ultrasound activated, uh, it's, a, it's a photosensitizer, but it's also activated by sound. So it's like a photo sono sensitizer. And that's the game changer suddenly you have the ability to treat at depth all the all the bad boys all the you know the pathogens give the mm -hmm. medicine is six to them but now you can get at them and you can get at deep cancers and you can get at uh, benign tumors and bacteria so the whole world is going to open up with this technology and the benefits to uh, to future generations is going to be uh, it's it's kind of unimaginable. I, I can kind of imagine it because you know I'm I'm involved with it. But the average person has they, they, when they when it really sinks in how how immense this advancement is. It's going to be earth shaking, and they're, and they're going to be thrilled with it because it's it opens up all kinds of possibilities. The, so uh, somebody the, somebody thought of trying a frequency outside of the band that they thought was required 
because originally they thought it had to be light, right? And the difference between sound and light is just frequency. Yeah. Well, right. the, 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 the guy that uh, I, I think really should be credited with uh, starting the whole thing is uh, Dr. Don Burke. And this, this was a, uh, a fellow that was sent from a very prestigious group, medical group in Boston. And he heard about the therapies, you know, this sort of uh, advanced therapy that had all kinds of other possibilities. And this was about oh, 15 years ago. He came and looked at what we were doing and uh, thought that it was, you know, pretty amazing. And then, but it, then he went back, and I, uh, I, I kind of lost contact with him. But what, what he did was he came up through the resources that he had, which are quite amazing in the Boston area medically. He said he came up with a, uh, a photosensitizer that was also ultrasound, was, was sound sensitive. And, and unfortunately, uh, that his a lot of his work was kind of lost, but enough it was was uh, lingered so that the uh, the group here who we had been working with and sort of working with them, they picked up the pieces and have reconstructed that as best they could. Now they've gone through fifty iterations, fifty different types of agents trying to recreate this best one that Dr. Burke had developed. And they've come up with, with one that works very well. And they're offering that treatment. And I've had the treatment. And so I, I speak from direct experience that I can describe it. But I can tell you that this is, you know, it's a non-toxic treatment. But, uh, you know, the, the uh, it'll be all, all on the website. But, you know, they have studies that were done with, with uh, well, the, the one that's most relevant for for what's going on now is their experience with, I think it's 25 or 30 people with far advanced lung cancer. So here we're talking about people that by any other measure would be given the equivalent of a death sentence, mm -hmm. lung cancer, because it involves all the critical structures around it. It's right in the, right in the heart, literally the heart of things, all around the heart, vessels, right. you know, the right. heart of, all the major pulmonary veins, arteries, etc. So it's all sort of commingled with the most essential nerves and vessels that there are in the body, maybe aside from the brain. So anyway, they've had you know very very positive effects at depth using this therapy, and there's absolutely no way that any of the the traditional PDT agents, you know. She would show any effect on lung cancer like that. And this is in China? This has been done in China, you said? It, it is being done in China. And uh, on, on, the, on the website, it's uh, photosonics.com. Yeah. S O N X, photo S O N X dot com website. If you look under SPDT, Persona Photodynamic Therapy, uh, you can read about it. And down at the, uh, not too far in, it'll have like an online brochure. And it goes into, you know, depth about it. But, uh, you know, I've, I've been through the treatment. And one of the things uh, that, I, that I showed you is that uh, it works for benign conditions too, which is a, a medical first. There's, you know, there's no, no way that anybody would be using the, the toxic uh, chemotherapy agents I'm not even sure how effective it would be for, for benign tumors, ones that you know don't aren't a risk in your body's uh, not, not gonna kill anybody or hopefully. But there there are uh, the instance that I was pointing out was so called enlarged prostate or benign prostatic hypertrophy. And there are tens of thousands of procedures done in the US, surgical procedures that have severe complications and side effects like impotence and incontinence and severe infections and they're hugely expensive you know it's basically the surgery is what's on offer for this there's some kind of you know uh 
temporary major sort of drugs, which have their own sort of complications, but the treatment is surgical. But here we're talking about a painless, quick, effective treatment for benign prostatic hypertrophy or enlarged prostate, with which most men, as they get older, um, have that problem. So just, just that alone is an incredible uh, advance. You know, I, I'm not sure how urologists will feel about it because their their income, if this were available, would probably be reduced by two thirds. Their mm -hmm. income probably a third of what it is if if they if that surgery is taken out of the equation. So, and that's kind of the problem that this this. Uh, technology is going to be very threatening to people doing it the old way because uh, this has so many possibilities for treating so many things because it's part of the what the body has evolved over millions and millions of years. You know, the lower animals, they, they, this dynamic all holds tr true for them too, lower mammals, etc. So. Right. Ones that evolved way beyond people did. So this dynamic has been baked in. It's part of our our system. But, but if, as we start to appreciate it and take advantage of it, it's like going to be the golden age of medicine and the golden age of health. It's going to it's going to, people can be well imagine. And I I I feel that it's I've had the benefit of it. But imagine if you could take something that's uh, a chlorophyll-based medicine, totally non-toxic, and I'll give you the toxicity in just a moment. Totally non-toxic, and you do, uh, you know, basically get in a, a bath and have ultrasound energize all those molecules that, are, that have stuck to all the kind of the crud that's built up in your system over however many many years you're alive. You know, even cholesterol plaques and things like that, but any viruses, benign growths, cancer, etc. if you could do this, and, um, and it's basically, it's like a rejuvenation experience. You're kind of cl literally cleansing a lot of the bad stuff that's collected or mutant cells, etc. that if, if left unchecked, would, you know, gradually cause all the problems that we have now. But imagine if that, if that is readily available in the future, it's, you know, how, how could you how could you wish for anything better than that? But right. that's that's what's basically, and, and I'm sure it's going to get better and better. But that's what's that's what we're talking about here. Let me ask you one quick question to interject into all that, and that is that you explained that you know it, it's built into the body, and the body actually has a sensitizer that it uses and it sticks on. Uh, pathogens and tumors and things like that and is supposed to get light from somewhere maybe trans you know transduced into something else from the light that hits the skin from the sun um what happened how come that system is not taking care of it well uh if, if you if you if you go to studies like the china study if I can think of the guy's name who did that. That's like the largest uh, study going in terms of of health and, and diet and that sort of thing. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. Uh, and if people are, you know, it goes back a ways. It's not the case for China now, but it can go before. And, they, and, you know, their diet, you know, there's virtually no dairy cows in uh, China, many factories now, that, you know, but that, that's all something very recent. But people didn't drink, they didn't eat or drink a lot of dairy products. In fact, they have lactose intolerance. You know, they haven't developed kind of the resistance to that, so that they, they, they didn't develop that. So, but you know, mostly whole food based, you know, rice, carbohydrates, and you know, lot, lots of exercise, agrarian society, you know, and being out in the sun. And they had very few cases, you know, of heart disease or cancer or anything else. And if you go to if you go to Africa, it was I can't again I can't remember the guy's name, but he was an early guy in Africa, and he noticed that there was virtually zero prostate cancer there, and zero heart disease, heart attacks were virtually unheard of. 
So people in their more natural state eating lots of veggies, and what's what's in veggies? Chlorophyll. So, you know, in terms of bowel cancer and cancer in general and heart disease, it's at a very low level. You know, there, there are obviously some terrible pathogens in Africa that pose a problem. But there again, it could well be that uh, this technology is going to revolutionize that too. So, uh, if, if the, the best way if people want to not not take what I'm saying is, uh, you know, that's what I'm saying. But if they want to, to have peer-reviewed studies uh, and they go to uh, the, the, the site PubMed, which is the U.S. government's, you know, um, medical library archives where, you know, all the journal articles are, are archived and, and can be searched there. And you type in photodynamic therapy and malaria or photodynamic therapy or HIV or whatever. You'll start to see the scientific articles. Now, a lot of them, you know, they're very, a lot of very technical articles, but, you know, they have a summary there. So you can pretty quickly see that these are effective against just, just what I've said. In fact, this technology is used to cleanse the blood of, H, uh, blood of uh, HIV viruses in blood bank uh, systems. So, I, mean, I know it sounds preposterous that it's effective against HIV, but it is, and it's being used uh, to cleanse the, or their blood supply. So, so, and and it's been around for 15 years since um, actually, Don Burke did his actually, work. Well, that's that's for the uh, sonar dynamic therapy. The okay. sonar dynamic therapy probably goes back uh, over a hundred years, and that goes back to uh, a fellow named I think his name is George Pinson. And he also got the Nobel Prize for a light therapy for cutaneous tuberculosis. Hmm. And one uh, to break the tuberculosis germ is so-called uh, an acid fast bacillus. So uh, it, it's a very powerful. You know, it takes up for an acid stain, but things stain acid things. It's very powerful. Uh, uh, ne negatively charged bacteria. So uh, I, I, I didn't mention two of the other ways that you could sort of corroborate what I'm saying about the body's natural uh, use of these uh, light sensitive substances to stick to bad things. Now the, the, the second one would be psoriasis. Now psoriasis, the problem with psoriasis is that the upper layers of the skin are the cells there, they're multiplying at about 300% of normal, about three times the amount of growth in those in that area as what you call normal skin. And that's the reason it's thicker and you have all this shedding off because it's just shedding skin, you know, it's, it's like in hyperdrive. So that's not a cancerous condition, it's a kind of a hereditary thing, but it's something that's enough of kin to this uh, out of control mechanism that's going on with cancer so that it too if you if you look at and i'll have this on i haven't got it yet but i'll have it on the website showing this okay if, if you if you could google fluorescence or autofluorescence of uh, of uh, psoriasis you'll find pictures there where it's fluorescing and that's not from any medicine that's been given that's the body's own uh, the general category of these light sensitive compounds uh, is uh, the porphyrins, P O R P H Y R I N S, porphyrins. That's the general category. So it's, uh, and that's why this this early precursor to porphyrins called the protoporphyrin 9, like the beginning stage, is a very light sensitive molecule. So, anyways, so it sticks to, to uh, psoriasis. It sticks to, it actually, the, 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 pro, <coughs> excuse me, the problem with acne is very much related to a bacterial infection 
uh, as as uh, children go from being children to adolescent, a lot of hormones start circulating around, a lot of secondary sex char characteristics start occurring, uh, and more oil production. And this oil is a great source of food for these. It's called pea acne. So there's a certain type of acne bacteria that just thrive in these oily, down in the oil glands and down in the sweat, sweat glands and the, the hair follicles. And they start causing inflammation and that's what acne is. Well, just like the cancer cells pick up these light sensitive molecule in the autofluoresce, just like the psoriasis, autofluoresces, this, these porphins the body produces also because they're mycolic acid shell to them, they also predict, uh, pick that up. So if you shine a red light on that, you don't have to add any medicine, if you just shine a red light, it'll start killing all of these bacteria. By the same process, too, that you're same, talking same, same, but obviously they're sort of superficial, so it works very well. Okay. And that's why if you're indoors, if you're a kid, adolescent, eating french fries and, you know, no veggies. Right. And you're up north and you're inside, you know, watching, playing video games or whatever, uh, and you're not getting much sunlight, your acne goes, you know, through the roof. Where on the other hand, in the summertime, if people are out uh, and have a better, you know, more, more green veggies and yellow vegetables, etc., the you know, the pigmented parts of plant, you're eating more of that, the interacting gets a lot better, and the psoriasis gets a lot better. So the you know the the uh, psoriasis and acne both in the summertime. If you ask people who have both those problems or either one individually, they'll tell you that in the summertime it's a lot better. But mm -hmm. in the wintertime, oh, you know, it's terrible. You know, and the yeah. acne gets worse. And this is all part of this kind of natural. Uh, mechanism that the, the body uses to combat these various infections. Now, now the the the, uh, the 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 general category of this the application of this technology to pathogens, and that's that has a whole separate name. It's called PACT. P A C T. So that's photodynamic antimicrobial chemotherapy. Now it's not it's not the you know toxic chemotherapy that you know we normally associate with chemotherapy. This is just means you know it's a, it's a, it's a chemical therapy using these these sensitizers or chemicals. So anyway that's that's what they call it. Okay. So in that that uh, general category the pact uh, that's that's something that I think is also going to be have a, an amazing transformation in terms of possibility. And the first is the coronavirus. So obviously that's at the forefront of everybody's mind at this point. Right. Just in terms of, you know, older people, they're worried about their survival. So the, the problem is that at this time, if you went to the doctor and you said, I, I think I have coronavirus, do you have any medicine to uh, to uh, treat this? They say, no. Well, unless they give yeah. you a AIDS drugs or, you know, really powerful well, antibiotics like that. Yeah, that's remdesivir or a few of the other ones, but, you know, they're, they're, they're not going to give you that either. I mean, that's, that's even that, that isn't really a proof of that. And I, I don't know, I, I don't know if I sent you, I'll, I'll if you look on Wikipedia from from the one that's that's you know might show some help in that regard for one patient, so they're doing some tests in China. If you look at the the uh, the synthesis of that, it is it is like something from outer space. The complicated uh, the synthesis of that medicine it must cost a fortune. It I, I can't imagine it might cost twenty thousand dollars per treatment. Yeah, I mean, it's and it's just, it's got a list of what else it does to you, also. I I haven't gone into that. I, I didn't get it, you know, much past that. It's only been shown right. at one patient, but right. in any event. Uh, so the question is, if if this 
with this therapy, this is kind of my rationale for, for what, I've, what we're proceeding to do. The, my rationale for the coronavirus, here you have a virus, just like the other viruses that have been, this has been shown to be very effective against. It's a respiratory virus. And this medicine in China, the typical routine way that they, they, they administer the medicine because it's convenient, that's what requires sticking stuff in your veins or IVs or anything like uh -huh. that, is they have people breathe the agent. So it's given by inhalation. Okay. So, and it's routine even done. So you've got this medicine that's, that, that category, it's called chlorine 6 that category of medicines is tweaked to where it's especially sound sensitive in addition to light sensitive. Mm -hmm. But the same category, chlorine 6 has been shown to be very non-toxic. Uh, you give it right directly to the target organ of the, of the coronavirus respiratory virus. You have, you have a way to, you know, once it's gone there and it, it'll stick to it, uh, if it acts the same way it does to all the other viruses, it'll stick to that virus because that virus is an RNA virus or primary acid. So it's got all the dynamics just like any other virus. It'll stick to it because of this negatively charged uh, structure that it has. Is so this being is this is, is this being done in China right now? This treatment is being done. That's the treatment that I, I didn't have it for coronavirus. I had the exact same treatment that we would like to have tested to see if it's effective against coronavirus. I had the exact same treatment. I took the same medicine, breathe it in. I had right. the light and ultrasound. And they've, they've done the same treatment for cancer patients. They have a whole series of that with beneficial results that show that if you have this medicine, you give it by inhalation, which is shown to be unbelievably safe or yeah. being done in, you know, it's, it's being done and it's effective. It sticks to the stuff that it sticks to, cancer, viruses, you know, in the, in the case of lung cancer patients, it sticks to the lung cancer. And with right. the same, same thing that you're doing now, the ultrasound bath and the light, it's very effective at activating the agent at depth. So it doesn't take too much of a stretch to think, let's see, now you've got this virus that's just, you know, here you've got an agent, it's effective against a whole range of vi virtually every virus you can think of. Yeah. You've got a way to deliver it to where the problem is. You've got a treatment that you've shown that can activate it in depth and is totally harmless. Why wouldn't you give that a try? Well, so have you suggested this in China where you're living right now well what what i've done is there's there's a uh, there's an agency that was set up by president trump in 2018 uh -huh. and let's, let's see if i can think of the name it's called the bioterrorism I can't think of what it is for uh, uh, research and development agency and their writ is to uh kind of let the shields down in terms of a lot of the regulations or whatever. They're, they're kind of open. Let, is there anything out there that will be effective against bioterrorism, you know, bad you know, uh, uh, weaponized viruses or whatever else, you know, uh, anthrax, whatever, and viral pandemics, etc. So they, they have an agency specifically set up to uh, receive submissions for people that think they have a possible treatment or, you know, possible answers. And there are different categories. Right. They have one for diagnosis or treatment, uh, vaccines, and then other, other categories. So we've applied under the uh, therapeutic division uh, okay. uh, with, our, with our case. Now, uh, We've submitted that, and uh, kind of the you know the phone's been very quiet. Mm. We haven't we haven't gotten any any response back whatsoever. And how long, long is that, uh, how long ago did you apply? Well, it's about three weeks ago, but uh, that we okay. did get right after we applied, we got kind of a you know a form letter saying you know thank thank you. Yeah, uh, thanks for uh, applying. You know, right. But after that, nothing. 
Okay. But we do, um, I will uh, probably fine to just mention this. We, uh, my brother, uh, who lives in Illinois, uh, has, uh, well, you know, we've, we've written, emailed or whatever to the senator, uh, Senator Durbin. I haven't heard a thing back from him. This is a week ago. And we've, uh, we've also just yesterday uh, delivered the package to the brother of uh, uh, Congressman Dan Bost. Now, Dan Bost is a congressman from that you know, district in Illinois. And, uh, you know, he's, I think President Trump actually flew his jet in and gave a big rally for Dan, for, for, I'm sorry, Mike Bost, uh, for Mike Bost prior to the midterm elections. So this is, it's, you know, he's, he's not somebody that Trump doesn't know. I mean, he flew his, he did a, he did a thing supporting him, a uh -huh. rally there in Southern Illinois for Mike Bost. So Mike Bost, you know, we're following up on it, but Mike Bost will, he's got the information that gives our, our submission 500 word summary. He's got a whole list of all the PubMed established articles 15 or so showing how this technology is affected against all these viruses. And we have uh, a deck stack presentation as part of that. Now that's all with the Congressman who's pers personal friends with acquaintance friends with President Trump. So mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to imagine that somebody back there wouldn't would read it and see that it's, you know, all the evidence. And you can read our submission on our site down at the bottom of the home page. There's a thing where it says uh, BARDA uh, submission for uh, uh, effective coronavirus treatment. So if you click on that, you'll see our whole submission with all the evidence that we have. And it's a, it's a crushing amount. It's an overwhelming amount of evidence, all hyperlinked to these studies showing how it's effective against viruses. It's from a medicine, and I'll, I'll go into the uh, toxicology now. But one of the toxicologies that was done, you know, as part of the requirements for the for the trial and everything that's being done here in China, is uh, there's something called uh, a lethal dose 50 or lethal dose 10. So right. it's, it's uh, how how big a dose you have to give for a little lab lab animal before it'll, it'll kill 50 percent of them or kill 10 percent or 50 percent. Right. So anyway, the the test that, that and it's all part of the submission. It's got to study and everything that we submitted to BARDA, because, you know, obviously the kind of the interest to know where it was toxic or not. Sure. And the the yeah. normal therapeutic dose for this medicine is one milligram per kilogram of body weight. Okay. So on a 70 kilogram man, you take 70 milligrams. Right. So what you do in a lab animal is, you know, however much, what fraction of a kilogram that lab animal weighs, you would give him one milligram to whatever percentage. So, you know, he might be just a fraction of a milligram. Yeah. So they gave, they gave them the therapeutic dose, and then they gave them 250 milligrams per kilogram. Okay. So they gave him 250 times the therapeutic dose and injected into their belly. Right. Intraperitoneally. It didn't kill a single one of them. And their weights were essentially the same. And mm -hmm. basically, they were unaffected by 250 times the therapeutic dose. And it didn't, didn't slow them down, didn't kill anybody, didn't hurt anything. That shows you how non-toxic it is. If you had... Oh, anyway. Okay, I, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt the sentence. Sure, so, uh, okay, so uh, let's say... Somebody said, oh, you know, the drug companies are really happy. They'll sacrifice their income. This is going to be great. If you had 10 million people that need to be treated, what are the economics of doing that if, if, if your system was accepted? Well, the economics are, what, what is the synthesis process to produce this medicine? Okay. So if you if you look at the remdesivir, 
and you can go to Wikipedia and Remdesivir and look out. You look down to see how it, you, you can't believe it. I mean, it's just it's just staggering. You, know, you need you need to have a uh, somebody with a degree in pharmacology just to kind of explain that. But I mean, it's, it's unbelievably complicated and expensive. What we're starting out with the base material is spirulina. You can buy, you, can, you know, you can buy that by the barrel. And well, and, and you can produce a lot of it quickly too. It grows fast. Yeah. So that the, the substrate, the, the base material, is is very very easy to chlorophyll. And the the there's only a couple steps between chlorophyll, chlorophyllin, uh, a few other steps. They're, they're fairly straightforward to get to the chlorine. And this is chlorine E6. And, it, you know, you have to do a little tweaky on that. But basically, you're starting out with a material that is it's, it's as big as the world. I mean, the whole world is covered with chlorophyll. And that's the, that's the base. And that's, you know, I think that's why it's so non-toxic is because chlorophyll is the, 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 the very essence of us. Because that's, right. what, that's what we incorporate into our bodies. But I'm saying, say you get the material cheaply like that and quickly. What are the yeah. economics of getting from, I've got this bunch of chlorophyll, to actually administering it? What kind of facility do you need for that? Well, um, you need a, you know, obviously you want to, well, say, say theoretically, that somebody, somebody pays attention to how this is absolutely logical. It's not like you'd have to, I mean, well, what are the steps to approve prove a drug that they want to be sure it's safe? You do a test it on on the virus, and that can be done in days. Right. Basically, what you do is you take the medicine and the virus in culture, and you add different concentrations of the medicine, and you add different concentrations of light. You know, all separate kind of little trials. Sure. And right. Different, and different amounts of ultrasound, and you probably have a fourth way you have. Ultrasound plus the light, yeah. and you see what are, what are the you know what are the parameters? Did it kill the virus at all? And if so, did it did it you know was it just the light or just the ultrasound? It was better for both. And at the least concentration possible, what did it kill the virus? So based upon that, you know you you have some pretty good answers. But if if even at very low concentration, and with a little light it kills the virus, which is probably going to be the case. You see that it works. So you've got a medicine that, you know, the toxicity has already been established. It's in the chlorine six category that's been used for decades, various places. It's it's a medicine that's been that as we speak in use here, given to patients, no no toxic side effects at all. It's it's uh, uh, activated by ultrasound because if the virus in the lungs, obviously. No matter how good the agent is, if you can't activate it, right, uh, you know you're not going to have any effect. But we've got a way that's proven to be effective treating deep structures. So you've got all the elements. You could quickly test it against animal models for the, for the coronavirus. Very quickly test it there. And in terms of the human trials, in terms of seeing if you know it's safe to breathe this medicine, it looks like it's not toxic. But is it safe for the lungs? How will people react? How are they going to react to the light? How are they going to react to the ultrasound? If 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 it all already wasn't being done on a daily basis, with all the evidence of available, you might say, oh, a lot of stuff we have to do. It could take years to do this. But that's not the case. All we're doing is that the, exactly the same medicine, exactly the same treatment parameters, ultrasound, light, breathing it in, all of that's been done on the so-called human trials already. So there's there's no issue there. I mean, if, if they want to do more, they can, but they can just look look and see what it's like. And here we're talking about people that are, you know, in the hospital and maybe dying of this, or, you know, they got a chance of dying it. Yeah. So it's not, it's not the usual situation where you have the, the luxury of a lot of time. Do we have an idea how, how long it takes to get the effect that you want by treating somebody? Is it the first day, or do you have to do it'd it repeatedly be, for a while? It'd probably be just overnight. 
Okay, so it's pretty cheap to to apply. You just need the ultrasound and the light, and yeah. you can leave them in bed, right, to do the whole thing where yeah. they are. Yeah. Well, now you know, uh, it obviously has to be a logical progression, you know. And I can understand, you know, they're they're not going to want to release something that they haven't checked out because their job's at risk, and I mean that's the main thing. But you know. Even some lives could be at risk. So, but anyway, the, the primary thing is that they don't want to be go outside the protocol, and that's their comfort zone. But the, the kind of the shields are down now, and they're you know they've kind of been forced to think about: is there anything out there that's going to work? And there is. So they may not have been expecting this. You know, they may have been expecting the you know the big pharmaceutical guys. And they just allocated eight plus billion dollars right. to throw at this. So you can be sure that the vaccine category and the antiviral category for these hugely expensive medicines, they're going to be right at the trough. I mean, the uh, the application process. Right. They're going to be right there, uh, gobbling up you know huge amounts of potential funds, you know, to quote find an answer. And I think that's that's kind of business as usual, but I think this could come out of the blue. It's, it's kind of, I call it a white swan, not a black swan. Okay. But for for the for the, you know, for the pharmaceutical establishment, this may be uh, an event that they're never they're never going to get over being surprised at, because they, in the past I think they've been, you know, they've been proceeding in a, in a huge margins and you know all this stuff but you see the implications are i mean there's huge implications but one in particular is it say in a couple of days we can fly the medicine to them and be there the next day mm -hmm. it's take a test on the coronavirus and if they i'm sure they've got that they've got your culture right now you know so they just squirt some you know spray, you know air some stuff in a different concentration hit it uh -huh. with the light and look at it and see it. Is it, you know, did it kill it? So just right. in a few days, they could tell that. If they want to test against animal models, they could uh, to see if it's effective there. That's fair enough. But truthfully, uh, what are you talking, a couple of weeks? Yeah, at the most. I mean, I mean, you know, that industry likes to make, and academia and science in general now likes to make everything extremely complicated. And difficult, yeah. but really, what you're talking about is very simple. Yeah. And especially yeah. if it's not if it's not dangerous, it's really hard to justify, you know, decades of testing. Yeah. Well, hopefully, uh, if you're pardon the phrase, hopefully it can be done in Trump time. Sure, it could. And, and, it all depends and, on motivation. And, and, well, now what do you think? President Trump's motivation would be to, if he could come out and say, even if he, you know, if he gives it to guys, get on this, to, you know, let me know daily what's happening. In the first day or two, it kills the virus. And it kills yeah. the virus. So no, he I, came out and said, you know. I think his motivation would be to use it immediately. And that's yeah. why they'll, they'll try to keep it away from him because of that. Uh, the, the issue is the motivation of the people in charge, which is the whole drug network. And they may be less enthusiastic. So it seems to me if you could get it into his hands directly, quickly, without being stopped, or into the general public everywhere, although that's less desirable because they're not in charge. But if you could get it into Trump's hands, like past the people who are blocking this kind of thing, then I think it would be revolutionary. Well, it is going to be revolutionary, whether we get it in his hands. But we've, I think what we're doing now, we have a shot. If it's delivered to the guy who he personally did a whole event for, flew his jet in and flew an event for him to get this guy elected, it's not like he's a stranger to this guy. No, that's sure. a good, good shot. I'm sure he has the capability of hand hand walking this to there and saying, you know, deliver this or I want to give something to him personally. If he understands yeah. the the importance of this, 
because something what what was like something like a trillion dollars was wiped out for the stock market and you know people's pension. Oh yeah. Funds. No, there's no doubt that he, he would have the motivation. It's can he have enough confidence to realize his advisors are trying to give him misinformation? Because they have great credentials in the conventional world. And they say all the natural stuff is silly, you know, and dangerous. Well, this, this, but, but you see, this isn't natural. This isn't, it's based upon a natural it's, principle. Yeah, but it, it's not. It's not. A so they can say it's not gift. that natural. Don't worry, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think I have something like twenty different hyperlinks in this submission. And again, people can go to Photosonics. Yeah. And go down to the home page. First of all, they'll look at the, the pretty picture showing, you know, in white light, and then you add the medicine, and then you know it collects there and it glows. And that's just a fraction of the things that are going to be in the book and, and will be, you know, more in the, there's a whole section on uh, diagnostics that over the next day or two are fill in. So if people go to that site, they'll see it. It's, you know, it's, uh, it's absolutely, you know, it's, it's right in front of you. Yeah. How it concentrates there. And anyway, all the hyperlinks are there with the published articles. So it's indisputable how it's effective against these different viruses. Right. The worst viruses, most damaging pathogenic viruses around, it's, it's effective against it. But see, in the past, it's been limited because, well, if you think about it, you know, there are some virus infections that are real superficial that, you know, would be appropriate to treat. But the, the deep viruses, systemic viruses, that's been kind of a no-go zone for the, for the light to activate it. But not, that's not the case now. Well, you know, even even if you showed, like with skin cancer, right? There's millions of cases of skin cancer, especially with people who don't get enough sun. And they're all being treated by burning it off, freezing it off, all these different things. If you just showed absolutely that that would eliminate that industry, right? You could just treat everything simply with, with this uh, completely harmless protocol. Then it would be obvious that, well, if you got that into the deeper parts of the body, which you happen to know now how to do, um, then you'd eliminate all the other types that were less superficial. So even even the demonstration with the superficial part should be take about ten seconds to understand the other implications once you can get it deeper. I think it's the resistance issue you've got to that's going to take most of the strategy to get by. And if you've got somebody who can hand it to Trump and let him actually read it and absorb it, that would be a, a pretty good quick shot. That can I, be I can't imagine that he wouldn't see that if all it took, see, it, it doesn't even have to have it, you know, approved or anything else. If he could just, you know, did it, did it kill the virus or didn't it? Yeah, it's, it's actually really simple. <laughs> That's something hard well, for modern science to understand, is there are some things the that are super simple. Last, the lab research says, yeah, it would kill the virus. It, how, how good would it say, I mean, he could, you know, this hyperbole or whatever, if he could come out and say, as, you know, Barna, you know, we've tested something and it looks like we've got something, you know, it's been shown uh, to kill the virus. Right. And it's totally not totally harmless. There aren't any so-called side effects. Well, he he may not want to go that extra mile because they haven't proven that yet. But he could say that this this technology that's that we've just discovered the application to the coronavirus, uh, you know, is, is being used, and it's been at least in the people that's being used on, it's been totally harmless. Yeah, so he, exactly. He could, he could that's it. that's more of testing than a lot of this stuff actually has, even though it's written oh, up, you know, exhaustive. Absolutely. Now, now that the the important thing, there are a couple other considerations. A vaccine is usually virus specific, right? So it, it'll only affect a virus if it has a certain uh, characteristics, and that's if it works. If, if it works. Yeah. So, uh, 
you're always going to be any new mutation or anything that comes along, it looks like it's going to be that pandemic. You're always going to be way be- behind the eight ball. You're going to be, you know, there's well, yeah, mutations. because it mutates, it mutates anyway. And there, and the problem with the virus is, I mean, with the vaccine is little stuff like, you know, a lot of people get killed when they take it. And you're not ever supposed to know that. And with yours, it doesn't even kill you. Right? It's, <laughs> no, it, it's no, apparently it totally you. safe. It helps you, right? That's an yeah, amazing concept. Yeah, medicine that doesn't, medicine that can't kill you, that's amazing. <laughs> well, and it's, and it's it has all these beneficial side effects, so it's pretty, pretty amazing. But right. think about this. If this is allowed to see the light of day, and, you know, we'll see. It, it, it's going to come. It's just a question of when. You can't keep something like this. <clears throat> not now with the Internet and not with the coronavirus and all this. <clears throat> but the, if you think about the longer-term consequences, the next thing that comes along, you have medicine available to treat it with immediately. Right. It's not, it's not like you have to wait, wait to that it's develop ready. something totally different, right? Well, if you isolate that population and you test them, you know, you've got the person who's sick, if you kind of lock it down, you test everybody for a couple of times to see who's positive for it, and you treat them. Right. So they're not going to be carrying it around. They're treated. You know, yeah. That's it. And the, yeah. Other, the other thing to think about is that the way this generally could be considered to work is that it, it's going to break up that virus. It's, it's going to cause that virus to kind of break down into pieces. Okay. And those pieces are active as an antigen. That's kind of the way a vaccine works. If you have a modified yeah. live virus, it stimulates, you know, to the virus or, you know, even little pieces. So yeah. If that, if that virus breaks down in a person who's been treated this way, they, they, they shouldn't go on to develop the symptoms, or if they have the symptoms, they'll quickly be curtailed. But as the virus breaks down and circulates around, assuming that they have a, a competent immune system, they'll develop a self-vaccination to it. At least to that organism, right? Well, to that virus, yeah. Right, right. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, also, go ahead. if you extend that, that means that the Ebola virus, the hantavirus, all these ones that are out there that there's been no effective thing for, you could take this medicine very quickly, just a matter of days, you could see where it kills that. If it does, you could apply that to these horrendous, high lethality uh, virus epicenters in Africa and other places in the Middle East. Right. You can also apply to that and be very easy to test and see. And any subsequent mutation or any bio, uh, um, you know, militarized uh, biological agent that, you know, who, who knows what rogue nation might be doing that, you'd have, yeah. you'd have a defense again. So it, it, it really, how about just the influenza virus that's killed X number of people in the states this year. It, it should be effective against that virus too. Or you know, you can very easily test to see. Now you have an actual treatment for these virus infections and in susceptible individuals. Mm-hmm. It, it is literally be a lifesaver for them too. Yeah. Well, can't think of any downside at all, except for the fact that there's no downside. So the powers that be might not like it that much but if you could get past them i think that you know it could happen quickly so well i think there's if there was ever a time when you had kind of uh you know you know burn the swamp down kind of guy at present yeah no this is the chance that's why they want back into the wall that's why they want him gone and that's part of the reason this is happening right now is that they can't afford to risk somebody with human motivation in the presidency. That, that's unacceptable. And it, before they carry this through to its ultimate end and blame it on him and get rid of him because of the virus, if this could get to him in time, that could be avoided, seems to me. 
in addition to this virus, if he came up with a an effective treatment you know, uh -huh. through his agency, then and uh, it also would work for future bioterrorism uh, or, or yeah. otherwise. Of course, the media will say that terrible president, he's t he's a racist because he's taken away the income of all these poor terrorists and, you know, chemotherapists and stuff like that. But that's expected. I mean, it would still be great, and I don't think all the people would fall for that. Yeah. And and it's an effective, uh, you know, a treatment that's been shown to be effective for cancer. I don't mm -hmm. think that would hurt his legacy or reputation. No. Either. No, that's the kind of thing he would love to find, I'm sure. Yeah, well, and I, and I would love to uh, be a part of it. Yeah, so. yeah, I agree. So we need to uh, do anything we can to uh, facilitate that happening right away because weeks are important now. The degree of spread that's expected in the U.S. in the next two to three weeks is to s supposed to bring it equivalent to... Uh, beyond where Italy is right now, where everything is shut down. And they're, they're doing draconian quarantine measures in Italy now. And that's expected in the U.S. in a number of weeks. So if it can happen before that, that would really be a good idea if there's a way to do it. Well, even the perception, even if he says, you know, Bard has come up with something, we've tested it, and it's effective coronavirus, we're quickly, uh, you know, Oh, yeah. Bring it into, Things would get better know. right away. And you're, oh, oh, absolutely. With now, there's, you know, there's nothing. But I, I will I will say this. That's one of the reasons that I uh, uh, I think that, you know, this this type of sensitizer is derived from chlorophyll. And yeah. spirulina, generally the chlorophyll that source that they use to collect the chlorophyll. Right. So, and I think I mentioned to you before the program started that uh, you can go to PubMed and do type in, I think, chlorophyll, or, or type in spirulina, mm -hmm. and type in antiviral. And you should come up with a study, but uh, I'll, um, I'll send you the link to that so you can post it on your, on your site as well. But if people go to that, okay. they'll, they'll see very scientifically how spirulina alone it's very, very effective as an antiviral, and that's something you could you could do with full confidence of its safety. I mean, how many millions and millions of people take spirulina every day? It's very right. safe, very right. natural, and if it's proven to be effective. Now, one thing that I, the, the kind of the, the icing on the cake, and that's something that isn't really proven at this point. But my, my feeling is. That if you took a, a, obviously you're not going to have access to a light bed, but if if you got the virus, and it could well be that just by taking the spirulina, you you'll have virtually no problems. Now that's a speculation. I'm not I'm not yeah. claiming that, but it's possible because if you're taking four to six tablets of uh, spirulina a day, mm -hmm. and and it may may you may it may be more or less a non-event for you even if you are older. Well, it'd be great to take that and get out in the sun if you could, right? Well, I this uh, spirulina is basically, uh, you know, it's uh, chlorophyll, and we know what the the absorption uh, peak of absorption is for chlorophyll. You know, it's got a peak over in the four hundred range, and it's got a peak in the and it's just shy of the mid range, uh, in the six hundred range. Okay. And, and people, they already, they have lights for, they're, they're called grow lights. These lights that are used as grow lights, they're, they're what, uh, you know, are, you know, have been shown to be wonderful. Those wavelengths that are, that are specific for growing plants, that's what you want to do. That's the light source that you want to use to activate if you're taking spirulina. So even so if you can't you, get in the sun, you could put that on your skin, basically, right? You, you could put this on. I mean, if you get it, you're taking chlorophyll, you put one of these grow lights, you know, on the chest area, uh -huh. the chances are you'll have a benefit from it. 
No, I'm, I'm, that's, uh, I'm not saying that's going to cure you or anything, but just on a theoretical basis, uh, that that would give you the best shot at activating uh, the spiromania that, that has been shown to go around and stick to viruses and kill them. Yeah. So you could do that now without waiting for yeah. any approvals of anything. And, oh, and well, you know, the, the question... I'm, I'm go ahead. States, I'm sorry. Absolutely. Get your spiromania and start taking that. Yeah. It's an antiviral. That's, that's what you want. This is right. a virus. You want, it, you want it to take an antiviral. It's going to help you in all these other ways. So what would happen to a medical doctor in the U.S. who tries to do this therapy on patients now? What do you, is it totally illegal, or what's the situation? Uh, uh, to use the medicine? Yeah, to do this procedure that you're talking about. Not not, not just not not just the supplement, but you know the full procedure oh. with ultrasound and everything. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure that he would quickly be shut down and uh, prosecuted. Okay, he so he would be using an unapproved <laughs> medicine. Now, now there are some loopholes, so that uh, if you want to self-medicate. Uh, and you can have something set in, and it's for your own use, and it's you know it's only like a two month supply. There are some sort of uh, loopholes, and not not so much a loophole, but a, a variance that the FDA uh, does allow people to bring in things for their own use, you know, and then limited supply. So uh -huh. it's possible that if this were available, people could bring this, and they could self medicate. And, but, you know, they, they, may, they it actually turns out that they, there is an ultrasound machine that you could buy. You could actually use the ultrasound, you know, it's used for sort of aches and pains, but it's available on Amazon. You can right. actually use that ultrasound machine to treat yourself as well. Now, there, I'm, there, I'm, there, are, there actually are some cautions with ultrasound. And I know that people have talked about that with respect to unborn babies that are affected negatively by it. But I don't know what the net effect is on adults, you know, if, if that's of any concern or just insignificant. If, if someone were pregnant, uh, you know, just to be on the safe side, I wouldn't recommend it. But you, you don't want to recommend, you know, that to what about anything. Peop what about people who aren't? Do you think there's any concern at all? Well... If, if you think about how many people, how many machines of these are sold for aches and pains and ultrasound, it, you know, it's in the millions. Yeah. So the, the, the usage is such that there's, there has been no blowback because of adverse effects or complications that are, to my knowledge. What do they advertise them to be used for on the retail uh, market? I'm not sure. I, I think it's, you know, probably joint pain or something like that. Okay. But if you go okay. to Amazon and look at an ultrasound, you'll see some little little machines. I, I I've got one here because I I just sort of was checking it out. But uh, yeah, uh, you know it has a little handheld thing. You know you've got two or three settings. Uh huh. And it's it's hard for enough. You put it up to the high setting, or you can hardly stand it on your skin. So you need to turn it down. So it's plenty powerful. But okay. if, but if you had. Uh, Anyway, that's that's potentially a way to self-administer ultrasound, but it's not something I'd I'd recommend at this point for, um, you know, for self-treatment. But grow lights tend to try to imitate the sun as close as they can, yeah. at least in the bands that affect plants. So if yeah. you had that plus internal consumption of an approved nutrient, well, it's not approved, but it's not illegal, which is spirulina. That should be pretty safe, I would think, legally to do that for yourself. I can, I can, you know, for for anybody to do that is, uh, you know, in the privacy of your own home. I mean, if you buy some, you know, Amazon will send you a spirulina, and you'll be there tomorrow. Yeah, It'll exactly. Send you a, a grow light, you'll be there tomorrow. So right. Way you kind of, it, it's kind of a, but it's not, it's not a, uh, a tin, uh, you know, a tin foil hat statement i mean you just go to you know and i'll i'll send you the link you can look at the okay link. okay but they, they actually had lab animals that you know if you uh you give this particular virus that they were using 
if you didn't give any spirulina, zero of the animals survived this challenge with the virus. If right. you gave them, uh, you know, more, then more would survive, all the, all the way up to where 60% of them survived if they had, you know, a little bit higher level of spirulina. So the direct correlation between the spirulina and the ability of these lab animals to resist a direct virus insult challenge. Okay. Absolutely correct. It's all in the paper. It's all proven. And, you know, they can go out, anybody can go online and see that spirulina has, it has a whole long list of benefits. Have they, have they correlated that with dosages at this point? I, I haven't, no. But I, my... Uh, if you go online with YouTube, you'll see where uh, there are some YouTube videos where uh, charitable organizations have gone down into Africa, and they'll they'll you know there's places down there that have very poor nutrition, and the children are definitely suffering from vitamin and other nutritional deficiencies. Right. And they'll they'll start a spirulina growing program, and it's well documented in these things. They'll start giving these children one teaspoon of raw spirulina a day right and in a month they're transformed yeah yeah now that yeah. of course the best way would be to do it like that but the dried form still has most of the potency i would think yeah yeah and that's because uh normal plants you know they have to have a very thick cellulose wall to compete for sunlight against you know guy next to them Right, but the spirulina are just kind of floating in the water. They don't have to compete, so their cell wall is very, very thin. So they it's don't... very easy for us to extract the, the chlorophyll from dried spirulina. Right, but uh, any other type of plant, dried food, unless you cook it, we can't digest that cellulose wall. So spirulina is ideal in that. In that Even way. other algaes like chlorella. They have to sell it as broken cell wall, and I, I think spirulina has an advantage that way. It doesn't need it as an exoskeleton or anything. It's just soft, right? Available. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's all right. Ideal. It may yeah. be the, the simplest, easiest way to, you know, have sort of a, a preventative strategy for the coronavirus that's shown to be effective as antiviral. It's cheap, yeah. it's easy, it's safe. But yeah. the question is, why, why not? Yeah, it's a great idea. Um, so how does all this correlate with what's going to be in the book? Well, the, the book is going to go into, uh, uh, you know, some history, but, you know, going into the various uh, types of photosensitizers, and it's going to go into, you know, have all the papers that are already published of the effectiveness of even using PDT for all these different types, almost every type of cancer you can think of, doesn't seem to work in my book, in my experience, that well for uh, sort of uh, so-called blood dyscrasias or, you know, uh, uh, leukemias and that sort of thing. But for lymphomas, I, th I think it can be very effective. And, and you know, it's all, all of these are shown in the book, which is, I think, good for people to know. Uh, it goes into all the different aspects of, you know, viruses, bacteria, fungi, all all how that works. Let's see if they, you know, cholesterol. It's also helpful for cleaning cholesterol out of the out of the arteries. Seems kind of amazing, but the, you know, there again, that's something that's uh, deleterious to people's health, and it works against that. The other major effect is going to be. Uh, that you know, kind of be described. It's how effective it is for abnormal new vessels. Uh, for instance, um, if you look at how many people are obese and have diabetes increasingly around the world, diabetes right. is like an epidemic proportions, epidemic growth curve at this point. Right. So. One of the things that happens when people get diabetes is it's, you know, it's, it has ill effects at the back of the retina on the, the circulation. Yeah. So the, the arteries, you know, they don't, they don't get enough, the retina doesn't get enough oxygen 
because the vessels are damaged. So what happens is the, the retina starts elaborating some substances that stimulate the growth of new vessels to come in mm -hmm. and try to get more oxygen. But in, when you have these abnormal new vessels form, they're fragile. So, and, and they're leaky. So very quickly, the retina, I mean, they want more oxygen, but in addition to that, you get all this fluid, so that, you know, that damages the retina, and then they can bleed. So you start yeah. getting hemorrhages in the, in the retina, and if they get bad enough, you actually bleed into the vitreous, which is the jelly-like substance inside the eye, and then, you know, you can't see at all. So, right, right. And then sometimes these vessels will grow up around and into the area where the fluid drains out of the eye, through the meshwork, and then you get glaucoma. So, you know, all, all these problems, but you see with this medicine, you have the possibility. Now, normally the treatment is an expensive round of something called and retinal photocoagulation, which is just uh, basically using a laser and kind of uh, burning spots all around the periphery of the, of the retina to right. reduce the overall need for oxygen. And you're just left with a little island between the optic nerve and the, and the good part macula, the good part of the vision. Uh -huh. You're kind of night blind for that. It's expensive. But imagine if you, if this, you know, this is, this is something that's a possibility. If you were to take a little bit of this medicine, mm -hmm. it'll stick to these abnormal new vessels, and maybe even just walking around, it would seal them down selectively, right. and that would be your treatment. It'd be, and that you, you it would develop this, uh, I think diabetes is like the number one cause of blindness in older people in the world now. So yeah. that's just a small little fraction of the possibilities, but that's... You know, I'll, I'll be talking about stuff like that in the book. The, the, uh, how, many, how many older men are facing this horrendous rotor rooter job for, uh, you know, it's called a TERP, transurethral prosthetic resection, uh, a resection of the prostate, TERP. But, yeah. I mean, it's a horrible thing. My grandfather died as a, a, a you know, complication for the thing. It was a long time ago, and it's easy to get infected. Yeah. Other people in my family have had it. Yeah, it's terrible. And uh, imagine if, and, and it, it's possible, uh, one of the things I'll have on my site, it'll, it'll go down to the different indications, but I'll, I'll show a, a streaming video of the effects of this treatment within a week after it was done on somebody who had, you know, problems with, uh, not serious problems, didn't require surgery, but you'll see the effect on that person, you know, within the week after you had the treatment. So it's a non-toxic, non non-surgical, with virtually no complications, way to shrink the prostate and eliminate the, the problematic symptoms of an enlarged prostate. So right. I think people might, might be interested in that. And now, see, they don't even know about it now. So I think it'll be it may be put people to sleep because there's going to be a lot of detail and a lot of there, but we'll have a table of contents. So if you look down, if you've got something of interest, you'll be able to click on that, the PDF file. So, you know, click on that, go right to where you want to look at it to see, see if something of interest to you. You'll have lots of pictures of all okay. the before and after of treatment for cancer. So yeah, I think it'll be, uh, but it'll also introduce the concept of this natural process that is totally or nearly totally unappreciated by the public. The fact yeah. that they we're producing light sensing molecules that lead to better health and healing. Well they don't appreciate it because they never heard of it. Yeah. So, yeah. so I I think that would be great. Um, any way to get it and I, I think it deserves some thought. You know, the technical stuff is well uh, described, but the exact strategy to get it accepted and approved as fast as possible is really the issue right now, right? Uh, because there's not really a question about the therapy other than all possible applications maybe, but there's enough known about it to start using it right now if it was uh, understood to be acceptable. It, it is being used right now. It's just not... It's not available to most people, but it is being used now. 
That's Where? A great result. Where? Well, in China, at this one particular clinic, and you know, it's a, it's a sanctioned trial. The, the device is approved, and it's the, the agent is being fast-tracked for approval. But it's being used now to, to great effect on the on the most impossible for advanced cases of cancer with you know okay. very very demonstrable and beneficial effects. So why do you think it wasn't used in Wuhan right away? Well, this this is this is the treatment now. The trial is being used for cancer, and nobody thought that it might be something to try for the virus. Also, I guess it just didn't occur to them. Huh? Uh, I, it occurred to me, and that's why I'm trying to get it out there. Right, right, because they could I, have avoided it. Occurred to me, I don't think it's occurred, it hasn't occurred until I kind of brought up the topic to much of anybody else. It must be, because they could have avoided some serious, unpleasant events in Wuhan if they well, if it occurred I think to them. I think, I think they're looking for some answers, but truthfully, you know, any kind of older civilization is... Uh, uh, you know, the, the regulations of some sort of, sort of pile up. So, you know, China yeah. has a lot of protocols and regulations and and yeah. so that's all in place. So it's, I think it's actually, believe it or not, more difficult to get something approved in China than it is in the U.S. Some sort of really? Place. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that's true. Okay. So we need to work on it in both places, I guess, huh? So we'll start, um, start doing I'm, my, my Chinese is uh, not good. So that's, I'm going to leave that to somebody else. But, okay. Uh, Your English is pretty good, though. So uh, we, should, too bad. we should do it in America for sure. And then other people would yeah. notice. Yeah. Okay. So from this whole discussion, what, what do you think people should you know remember as a central point to walk away with? Probably one of them is take spirulina as a supplement right what else i think just to kind of uh, open their mind to um, this whole new concept of in addition to the usual immunologic uh, <clears throat> stuff that we think about that's how we fight infections our immune system mm -hmm. that this whole other other aspect of the benefit that the, that the body has developed to produce these life sensitive substances it's working in, in parallel to that without them really even knowing it. And, and this is based upon green stuff. You know, it's right. not orphans. But if you eat lots and lots, you know, of green stuff, you know, the way that kind of nature intended, more plant food based diet, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to really bolster that you know, parallel system that the body has for health and healing. Isn't it interesting that we're taught that light is dangerous from the sun and that you have to stay out of it, always wear sunscreen, dark glasses, hats, and as many clothes as possible. So that's kind of guidance as long as you just reverse it, right? Well, uh, I think people will see that uh, as this becomes accepted, There'll be, you know, there'll be creams that you put on rather than a sunscreen. You could, you know, which could keep you from burning if you need to keep from being sunburned. But there'll be, you know, there'll be some of this might be a little greenish color or not. If you put that on, it'll stick to all the it's called actinic damage, the sun damaged areas that you can that are precancerous and even skin cancers. And just by having Nice and you'll be you'll treat mm. yourself wow, and uh, you know for, for acne, for sun damage, and the skin will look start looking a lot younger too. Wow, that, that's a that's a great image. Okay, well to sign up for pre orders of your book because it's not available yet. How do they do that? Uh, if they'll go to Photosonics. Dot com. They'll see where the you know the, the one of, one of the uh, categories at the top is the ebook, and if you click on that, it'll tell about it, uh, and there'll be a link where you could go and pre-order. 
Okay. The advantage, the advantage of the pre-order is that it'll, there's a very well-done chapter, or part of the chapter on skin. It was done by uh, Dr. Mark Stringer, and this is quite a few years ago. So it's it's older, but it's uh, it, it kind of goes into the basics, and they can understand that. And that's kind of a preview chapter that they would get at the time they order it. They'll also get uh, a book by a fellow that. It's kind of an interesting on diabetes, how to use plant-based foods to combat diabetes and how he worked, he did. And the other thing that they'll get is this chapter, or part of this chapter on the coronavirus, where I also go into the benefits. But I think I even have the link to this Viralina science uh, showing, or the study showing that it's effective against viruses. Okay, sounds great. So, photo, so light and sound, photosonx.com. Photo photosonx.com. Okay. Yes. Sounds great. Well, let's see what we can think of to take it to the next step and we'll stay in close touch. So hold on and we'll say goodbye in the break here. Okay, everybody, there goes Dr. Bill. And uh, remember his upcoming book, The Unified Field, Unified Theory of Health and Healing. And his website, photosonx.com, F O, I mean, uh, P H O T O S O N X dot com, where he's going to be updating uh, his work and how this project goes. Um, I certainly think that after talking to him, it sounds exciting to me and um, the kind of thing that deserves to be known everywhere. Because, you know, it's got the qualifications as a really good uh, health protocol because. It doesn't hurt or kill anybody. <laughs> that's a big one right now because that sets it apart to almost all of modern medicine or a lot of it anyway. And it also appears to have a wide range of healing effects, which is understandable for any, anything that is really powerful and works with nature. You would expect it not to be uh, targeted toward one particular condition. In this specialization mentality that we've all been trained for in higher education, things that work with nature uh, tend more often to help everything instead of just one particular condition. And I, this has that uh, qualification with it. So I would encourage people to listen to this video uh, more than once if you need to pick up details of it. I think the uh, important thing is to get his work and his information known as widely as possible and it'll really help when the book comes out he's also got this application in for the new um, agency that Trump started called BARDA B Bioterrorism uh, Research and Development Agency BARDA and uh, we'll see what happens he's already got the application in there and you know if it were <sighs> all uncompromised people working there, which is extremely unlikely, but if that were true, the first day after somebody had read through his material, which probably takes about an hour or so at the most, he would be invited to come there and demonstrate everything. Um, and he hasn't heard back as of the time of this recording, so we'll see what happens with that. I, I think, you know, the president needs to get this stuff in his hands along with information on nano silver, on vitamin C, on uh, the damage done by uh, drug company antivirals, which I don't think would, I mean, they can't possibly compete with something that's natural and has no, no harm to using it. So I think they're just out of the question. They're a big money maker, but um, they're going to hurt a lot of people. I know of had friends back you know, many years ago that were killed by the AIDS drugs before they were killed by AIDS. I mean, before they would have been killed by AIDS, they were killed by the drugs. And certainly the injections will be uh, in that category too. And I think the danger of the viral epidemic, uh, aside from the virus, is the danger of the treatments. And unfortunately, the president in the U.S. right now tends to believe um, people who had large companies that he calls great companies, even if they're working for pu putting out things that are deadly to humans and other life forms like 5G and even any other forms of Wi-Fi. Um, he said nothing at all about geoengineering, which is an immediate threat to all life on Earth and is, in my mind, causing a lot of the climate disruption that then will be 
blamed on us and used as an excuse to shut down the, any remaining liberties that we might have. Um, he doesn't understand the damage of the Federal Reserve and so much that he doesn't know. I, I, I disagree with the, the Q people who think, oh, Trump's playing, you know, 300 D chess or something. No, he's not. He, there's a whole, whole bunch of stuff that he obviously does not have a clue on, and he needs to get real information. But the reason that they want him out of office is because his attitude is good. It's, it's his motivation's good. It's nothing like the media says. They can make you or me or anybody look like a monster, and they've done that to the president since he first ran for office. Don't I? I recommend not being fooled by that. It's very convincing when you don't know about the collusion between all the different parts of the corporate media. But if you understand that all of them are owned by a, a handful of interconnected global corporations um, and you know what their agenda is for the world, which is well underway right now, then it's not hard to understand that the media usually tells you on important issues the opposite of the truth. And I don't think, you know... There's, there's so much of it that that the president just doesn't get at this point. Uh, but the people who think he's a demon are equally completely uh, misinformed, in my opinion. I've analyzed his character extensively, and the things that he's done make it really obvious. He's trying to do what he can, although he's surrounded by traitors and people that want him drugged and killed, and or killed and drugged, whatever comes first, I guess, and... Uh, misled and advisors that are traitors and that's the challenge about getting something like the information of Dr. Bill into his hands uh, or it's just as hard getting something like on the real alternative energy that's available now that is nothing like solar and wind it's so far beyond that stuff you're not supposed to believe it exists but it's existed I agree with Stephen Greer for more than a hundred years and the issue is just this little problem that people who try to come out with it and produce it uh, tend to all just commit suicide, even though they have no interest in committing suicide in, in very athletic and creative ways that are not suicide. And that's the issue. That That's why we're stuck with toxic technology and a lot of which uh, the president thinks is just great companies and he's just naive. He's a really good man in spite of being made to look like a demon on television. And this is not partisan. I think a lot of the Republican Party is completely criminal, but not him and not in his intent. Doesn't mean he's perfect or anything. He's compromised in a lot of ways for just being able to do business in New York. But that's not the priority issue. It's that he is really trying to do good for the country. And having anybody who's honestly trying to do good for the country is just so amazing after having people like Bush and Clinton and Obama and Carter and well Carter had some good motivation just was a little misinformed as well but the Bushes and Clinton and Obama and people like that were used to people trying to destroy the country and doing pretty well at it this one is not doing that and he's not backing 5G and GMOs because he's evil he's backing because a lot of smart people think those things are great and there are different kinds of intelligence. It's not the same as awareness. And somehow you got to get them combined and put common sense and r real strategic awareness of what the situation is now. A uh, real understanding of the solutions that don't hurt anybody. And, you know, that's real medicine. It has no so-called side effects. It's just it just helps you. It's basically something that your body just absorbs and it helps all kinds of things at once. That's real medicine and we're supposed to forget about that like it never existed. But it has been used by the people who knew for thousands and thousands of years back before recorded history. And this is an example of somebody coming up with that and it reminds me of somebody coming up with um, free and clean energy technology which exists all over the place but the people will die who try to bring it out. This is the same kind of situation in my mind. So even if it got into the hands of the president, it would have to go with a protocol and a plan for incredible security. Because you can imagine that the 
the dark side of, with a lot of really foolish people who are working for it who don't realize it'll destroy them too. Um, they're going to see this as not a desirable <laughs> turn of events, right? And you, you want to be prepared for that. And there has to be a strategy and a plan to overcome it. I mean, all the agencies are corrupt. They'll, they'll do testing on this that proves it's poisonous and would have killed everybody and that uh, the president was a demon for suggesting it. They'll do all kinds of stuff, whatever is necessary. And somebody who understands that has to direct a security team that understands that too. I mean, it's really serious. People who talk about this disappear. Okay, it's not like watch out for, you know, in case you meet a criminal who's going to attack you. It's not like that. All the power positions are full of those people now. And they're, they're not smart enough to realize that if you work for evil, it's not a belief system or a religious question. It's a real reality question that there are levels of how the universe and, and creation work that nobody gets away with anything in the, in the end. So it, however we treat other people, and this is directed at you guys who are monitoring and spying on us in this broadcast, um, if you work for censorship and a medical system that's gone crazy and is recommending things that kill people all the time, look at Gary Null and Carolyn Dean's paper, Death by Medicine, if you're not real clear on that, or uh, Dissolving Illusions by Suzanne Humphreys, any of these doctors that were brave enough to tell the truth, and there are some. Most of them have been brainwashed and don't even know it anymore. Um, that's the real situation that we're dealing with. And it's not just for health. It's not just for the virus situation. It's for the whole condition of life on this planet. And I think, and it seems like you would agree, that having things go back to what should be normal and everybody being okay would be a really good idea. And the people who don't think that or are brainwashed into serving the system, they're not at the top evil levels, but they've been brainwashed by their so-called education and the media. And they, they think um, they're just saving the world against, you know, all these misinformation sources and stuff. We need a way to, to like a cold shower to wake those guys up. Because life on this planet's going to end at the hands of man, not because what the so-called liberal progressive people say, they're mostly all totally programmed and brainwashed too and, and pr promoting horrible stuff in the name of good causes. Um, and Because I say that being a devoted environmentalist since the early 60s at least, but what it's turned into now, just like feminism, is crazy. And uh, the common sense part is gone and that's not partisan, it's not really, you know, uh, motivated by any nefarious ulterior motives. It's just the, the things that are good for life need to be brought back. And uh, you guys who are working for the other side need to think about it really carefully because if you're in a position of power where you can censor, you can promote medicines that'll kill people, you can promote injections that are designed to do the same thing, you can uh, develop bioterrorism weapons like they did with this one, which came from the U.S. and went to China and was sold to them and then released. If you're working in any of that stuff, you may be really smart in other ways, but it's not very smart to do things intentionally that are going to hurt people because you're connected and you don't get away. And it, if it affects them, it affects us. So really think about it. I mean, there's very little chance that you'll think about anything I'm saying at all. I'm quite aware of that. But in case uh, you might consider it, could be a turning point for your life. And if you're in a position in the negative power structure, you're in a place where you could do a lot of good. And then when you, your life is over and you look back on it and you see, well, actually, at least I did something at the end that was beneficial that can turn around your future completely because our future doesn't end with this lifetime. So just a few outside the box thoughts in case you want them. Uh, remember that in case we are not anymore on the popular big programs that you are used to seeing us on, go to brighton.com, B-R-I-G-H-T, 
eon.com slash channel slash Lost Arts Radio and subscribe and we won't be censored over there. So um, you might want to be a subscriber on there right away before you forget and follow our main site at lostartsradio.com. Uh, Doug has put up a subscribe star page for us because we need money. We're not doing the commercials like you're supposed to do. And subscribe star is a way to help us stay, you know, keep our work going. And that is subscribestar.com slash lost arts radio. Uh, there's also donate buttons directly on um, the website lost arts radio and also lost arts research institute.org, our nonprofit. And uh, if you want to get into an environment that's not going to be censored, that's live and interactive every week and a mutual support system where we can talk openly about any subject you want. We don't do medical advice, nor do I want to. I'm not a medical doctor. But information sharing without restriction or censorship, you can access that via planetaryhealingclub.com. Dot com, planetaryhealingclub.com and I'll be there and Doug will be there every week live, interactive and we can talk about issues that you're dealing with and share information related to that you might find it very valuable and we're really working to expand that right now if you're in political office or member of law enforcement or sheriffs um, anybody like that get in touch with us because uh we're looking at how the sheriffs can actually um, help us avoid getting into a real bad situation with medical martial law in this uh, virus situation. And we'd like to be in touch with you. Uh, and you can write to us, contact forms on the websites or richard at lostartsradio.com. You can be in Planetary Healing Club too. You're not excluded. Uh, planetaryhealingclub.com and the live show that we do right after that which uh, is going to be having a lot of relevant information to current events and relevant history and things like that and that's at uh, 4 30 p.m pacific 7 30 p.m eastern on every saturday afternoon and hopefully you'll find that valuable too that's all free so thanks for sticking with us on this kind of long show with dr bill i thought it was really worthwhile We'll see what we can do to help him out. And I um, really appreciate your caring about any of this stuff. It makes you very valuable to the world and I encourage you again to take care of yourself, especially under stress. That's when it's the most important. And it's when almost everybody just lets it go and says, we'll do it later. Um, that way you can stay valuable to the world and make a contribution here during that brief time that we're around. So anyway, nice to be with you and um, hopefully see you again next time and maybe meet you on planetaryhealingclub.com. See you soon. Mm -hmm.